Welcome, my name is Christopher Paisley, a Philadelphia public school teacher for Inside White Fragility. Today we're going to look at racial segregation in Seattle. Now recently there was this controversy over this picture that ended up on Twitter. It was a picture of this equity training in King County, Washington in a library where it showed that on one side there was a picture where it showed that people of color were supposed to go. There was a kind of a sign. And then there was another sign where uh, white people were supposed to go. And this was taken in and was put, in, put up on Twitter. And it was reminiscent of the 1950s, kind of a 1950s segregated diner. Um, this whole thing was reported by uh, a writer and journalist named Christopher Rufo, who writes for the City Journal. And I'm just going to quote one of his articles that reported the story. At the King County Library System, a private consulting firm called Racial Equity Consultants recently held racially segregated listening sessions. The consultants begin with an anti-oppression framework, internal documents show, and they use segregated sessions to root out institutional privileges and systemic inequities. Widespread institutional racism is said to exist in the libraries, and employees who reject that premise are accused of internalized racism. When reached by email, racial equity consultants said that it was not authorized to comment. So the story as well as the picture went viral, prompting the King County Library System to deny accusations of segregation, segregation stating that it was, of course, misinformation. And then they had this letter. In 2019, under the guidance of our consultants, racial equity consultants, REC, we provided caucused listening sessions for staff to help inform REC's institutional racial equity assessment work. These listening sessions were voluntary for staff and designed to gather information to help us be better understand institutional racial equity concerns. So a visit to Racial Equity Consultant's website will give some background information on the group. If you read their approach on the website, it states, we focus on anti-oppression, equity models rather than diversity approaches, understanding that power and privilege mirror the intertwining dynamics of racism and oppression. We are experienced in curriculum design, training, facilitating conversations, developing racial equity leaders, and steering organizations toward becoming racially just. Okay, so admit, it admits up front that it doesn't take a classic multicultural approach, but an anti-oppression or anti-racist approach. And there's definitely a difference between the two of these. A classic multicultural approach is more unifying. It's celebrating our differences. It's where people look at their differences, but then they try and find that universal or common bond that makes us all human. Again, it's more celebratory. The anti-oppression, anti-racism approach, as you can see by the prefix anti, it's definitely more polarizing. Um, it's accusatory. It's accusing one group of doing one thing. It's zero sum. It's saying that, you know, and it stereotypes all whites as privileged, all people of color as victims. So it's this more of this approach that's more polarizing, okay? But if you look at REC's services on their website, you'll see that they offer something called racial caucusing. This is where members work separately in their respective identity groups as either people of color or white people. In racial caucus, people of color and white people learn to work towards dismantling racism from their separate and particular positionality. So you can see it's working from this polarized place. It's a separate place from their own position. REC believes that racism continues to play out in our institutions when white people evade addressing internalized racial superiority and people of color are silenced by internalized racial oppression. Racial caucusing involves separating whites and people of color into affinity groups based on race, where people of color are asked to reflect on their internalized racial oppression and whites are asked to reflect on their internalized racial superiority. Some questions posed to whites are, how are you socialized by internalized racial superiority? How do you collude with white culture in your institution team at meetings in organizing during your day? How do you collude with whiteness? How is white supremacy reflected in your institution or team? It's not asking if, it's asking how. How are you a white supremacist? How do you collude with this whiteness? How do you oppress people? Okay, not if, but how. It stereotypes the entire group 
And then, of course, in the opposite end, it's, it stereotypes the entire groups of people of color as victims, as oppressed, and et cetera. Okay? Recently, at the urging of President Trump, the Department of Justice began investigating Seattle for such trainings. Uh, President Trump wrote this executive order. He's really looking at critical race theory, and it's about time because this stuff is very toxic. Okay, People who are exposed to this, people who read about it, who go underneath the, the neat cover into the substance of this stuff, it's very clear what it is. Okay, But interestingly, there are those who stand by these trainings. This is a stunning illustration of the administration's warped priorities, Seattle Mayor Jenny Durkin said in a recent statement. In the midst of a nationwide reckoning with systemic racism and police violence, the administration is considering suing the city of Seattle for a training we provide that specifically seeks to combat racism and advance equity. Okay, so that's kind of the narrative that's going along, this kind of, I guess you could say, propaganda on the surface. All right. Even Joe Biden doesn't seem to understand this. Those that watched the first presidential debate with Trump, Biden claimed that these workshops are simply benign sensitivity training. He said this stuff wasn't going on. So obviously he doesn't look close enough at this. All right. But obviously reality paints a different picture. Here is a leaked video from a 2017 Seattle training. So <laughs> I put this up because I really want any white person in the room to know up front that this is what we're dealing with, that it's not going to be this coddling of white tears and what that looks like. We're not going to discuss, oh, maybe some of us have worked it out. No, you're always going to be racist, actually. So even when you're on your path to trying to figure out how to be a better human being, um, because I believe that white people are born into not being human, like that actually instead of people of color and black folks being dehumanized that actually everyone is dehumanized off rip within white supremacy that y'all are born into a life to not be human and that's what y'all are taught to do to be demons so in this particular way white people are all racist so this stuff is completely polarizing completely toxic and completely inappropriate so much so that the united states uh civil rights uh, members have gotten involved. U.S. Civil Rights Commissioner Peter Kersenow has argued that racially segregated training sessions violate the 1964 Act, which prohibits employers from segregating employees based on race, color, religion, sex, or national origin, the Equal Opportunity Act. And this is what he states. When you witness some of these trainings, they are truly extraordinary and astonishing. Not only are they based on a false narrative, but anyone who has to sit through them, are very, very many of them, are humiliated. Again, these programs aren't all the same, but many of them are so aggressive that they clearly transgress Title VII, and to some extent, you may even say that they may be a violation of 42 U.S.C. 1981. Why aren't there more lawsuits? Good question. It's mainly because employees are cowed. They don't want to lose their jobs. They don't know their right. rights. And in the current BLM zeitgeist, they're cowed against doing anything that seems to be against the prevailing narrative. You will see employees sit meekly as they are being subjected to the most vile and hostile acts. It's going on across the country, and it's going to be going on for quite some time unless there's some type of intervention. I applaud the Trump administration. First time ever has any administration done anything like this to intervene. Extremely important because this is maybe the most pernicious ideology we've ever seen in the United States, and I'm not overstating that. Now, last March, I attended a workshop featuring white fragility author Robin D'Angelo, and this was hosted by a group called the Association of Delaware Valley Independent Schools. So as a teacher, I wanted to go to one of these Robin D'Angelo workshops where they um, wanted to split us into these segregated affinity groups. All right, the workshop was supposed to take place at Malvern Prep, an elite private school in Malvern, PA, but because of COVID, it was done virtually, so we had to do it over the internet. Now, originally, there was an affinity group workshop scheduled as part of the presentation um, where the participants were required to segregate themselves by race. Again, this never happened, but it was supposed to happen. All right. And they specifically told you to make sure that you identify your race and you segregate yourself according to your skin color and race for these these segregated affinity groups. Certain eight. There were groups for Asians. There were groups for blacks. There were groups for Native Americans. There were groups for Latinos. There were groups for Middle Eastern people. There were groups for whites. OK, they were all segregated into these uh, groups. OK, but again, it didn't happen because of covid. Still, these kinds of polarizing, racially segregated workshops are doing real damage to people of all backgrounds. The King County Library System's fixation on skin color is quite ironic. 
named after Martin Luther King Jr. Jr. The county is still judging its people by the color of their skin and ignoring the content of their character. Dr. King is probably rolling over in his grave.